In this video, we're going to explain the mechanics of the control room. First, I'm going to go over the build, which is my standard healer build. Everything is still rolled to repair skills. The main difference with running control room is that I'm going to switch over my chem launcher and change it into a fixer drone. This is going to give me consistent heals instead of having to worry about dropping chems at my feet. The first thing I want to explain is how to open the airlock doors. If you look on the screen with the airlock occupancy panel, it'll show you that there is someone in alpha airlock. In order to open the door for anyone in an airlock, you will need to hold X. Notice that any time you let go of X, you will drop the door. This door mechanic works for Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie doors the same way. Holding X keeps the door open and letting go of X drops the door. Next, we are going to review the screens of where the codes will come up. Starting in the top left corner, the screens will be one, two, three, and along the bottom, starting in the left corner, they are four, five, and six. Here are two useful charts that we use to train people in the control room. The top is what the codes look like for the person who is in the furnace, reading them above Bravo airlock. The bottom shows all six screens and how they correspond, whether your furnace person is reading them to you by screens or by codes. If you're running Control Room, you're probably familiar with the codes and how to call them. But in case you're not, here is a chart that shows you how each of the codes could be called. You will either have double cups, a broken cup, a full cup with a white top, or an empty cup with a black top. They will either be on a belt, on a hook, and if they're moving, we always say they have an arrow. Once the furnace person calls out the code or the screen, you will read the corresponding code for that screen. The next screen to show is crucible capacity. This screen shows how much the crucible is filled and how many codes we've gotten right. In the back of the room is the valve for water. When it's time for waters, we will be able to come to this valve and once it is able to be interacted with, you will press X. The console I'm standing in front of is what we use to move the crucible. Once the codes are done and the crucible is at 100%, the console will turn green and we will be able to use it to move the crucible. Once the crucible is moved, you will have to move back to alpha door, open it for the furnace person so they can do the weak points. You will go back and forth between moving the crucible and opening the door for weak points three times. You will then have a double interaction where you will have to move and pour the crucible. Then it will be time for water. After the water is locked in, you can come to Bravo Door and let your team inside so they can kill the boss. Here's the control room in action, and I'll be able to explain more during the fight. All right. Everybody ready? All right. Opening it. As soon as the furnace person steps inside the furnace, it will start the encounter. Hold up. Full cup on a belt, that is full cup on a belt. Scorch, can you show my box? You getting your stacks off, Seder? Here you can see I'm holding A, which keeps the airlock door open so our furnace person can do damage to the boss while they wait for the next code to come up. Empty cup on a hook moving, empty cup on a hook moving. If you're going to be helping solo power, you're going to want to position your screen where you can see alpha side door. Once the third grenade is thrown, you'll be able to see before your control room door closes if the chunga comes out of that side. If they do, I will call alpha side, and if they don't come out of that door, I will call Charlie side. Charlie side? I'm down. Now that the control room doors are shut, I will be responsible for calling the codes. I will keep an eye on the six screens on the side, and when they light up, I will tell the furnace person that the codes are up. At this point, I'm starting to take some damage from the fire in the control room. When the next code is called, I will drop to the back of the room, avoiding the center with the fire, deploy my healing drone, and call out the necessary code. Is a cracked cup on a hook. Cracked cup on a hook. 
At this point, I'll be watching the crucible capacity okay. screen so that I can see when the code is good and that we've gotten it correct. Second one coming. percent good code. Alright. Second one outside. Once again, I am waiting for the next code to come up, and then we'll call it out to my furnace person. Codes up. Five is a black cup on a belt. Black cup on a belt. Scored. The siren you are hearing go off okay, is for rockets. Fine. You need to make sure your furnace person has both rockets and open the door for them. They will shoot both rockets at the red bar underneath the cannon on the train. The sirens will stop once both rockets are deployed at the cannon. Our group burns the Charlie side rockets so that they both spawn on Alpha side. If you're not sure how that's done, you can check out our Charlie side video and it will be explained to you there. Heads up. Screen six is a cracked cup on a hook. Cracked cup on a hook. Scourge. Once the crucible is at 100%, I will drop back in the room and drop my hive. This will help keep me alive while I'm standing in the middle of the room trying to move the crucible. Once I can interact and move the crucible, I will do so and then go back to alpha door to open it so that we can do weak points. You will be able to see where your furnace person is shooting the weak points. And once it has exploded, you're going to go to the center console and move the crucible again. Going back to the X button for the second weak point. Second weak point. Once the second weak point is down, you will move the crucible again and then go back for the third weak point. Last weak point. Second rocket outside. Once the third weak point is done, you're going to go back, and this is the double interaction. You're going to move and then dump the crucible. You'll know you were successful when you see the crucible pouring onto the cannon in the back of the room. All right, it's dumped. Nice. Once the lava is poured, the next thing you have to do is water. So make sure your team is alive and well, and that your furnace person is ready, and that your health is maintained. If your drone is close to dying, you're going to want to refresh it and do an overcharge. So we'll ready on water then, all of the 15s on Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. All of the 15s. I will often give a reminder to my team of what waters are being sent. However the water valves are situated, we need to have between 85 and 95 in the control room. I will wait and hold Alpha door open and watch my partner in the furnace. As soon as they call to send water, I will drop the door and run to the valve in the back. The valve will read incorrect water pressure until your team sends all the water they need to. As soon as you can activate the cannon, do so and let your furnace person know that it's activated. I will then run to Bravo door to be ready to let the furnace person in so that they don't die in the furnace. Opening Bravo. Once my furnace person is inside Bravo airlock safely, I will drop the door temporarily to let them clear their stacks. This gives the rest of the team an opportunity to join them in the airlock. Once everyone is in, I will open Bravo and we can kill the boss. Once the boss is dead, the control room doors will open up and you can rejoin your team.